Discord. Hello, everybody. This is Tanya with Power Pantaloons, your holistic cancer wellness guide. And today we have Wendy with us. I'm going to let Wendy say her last name so I don't butcher it and introduce herself. Hi, Wendy. Hello, and my name is Wendy Blaskovic. And what do you do? So what do I do? Um, I multitask a lot. So at the moment, I am a stay-at-home mom of three amazing children. I'm also a business owner of Unravel Yourself from the Inside Out. And um, just trying to grow myself and do more and be better and feel more. So I am more equipped to handle life's ups and downs, really. Unravel yourself. What yes. does that mean? So what does that mean? Yeah. So unravel yourself to me is like all of the stuff that we have inside of ourselves that's all messy and entangled, kind of like a ball of yarn, and we don't know where it starts and where it ends. And this is the stuff that really bogs us down. I see this as energy. I see this as emotions, feelings, our past that we hold on to into our bodies, but we just can't articulate it anymore because it's so far pushed down and we've avoided it. And bringing it up and unraveling it, then we began to, or we begin to see clarity. We begin to understand it. We begin to not be scared of it anymore. So then we can honor it, love it, feel it, and do better, be better, and feel more. And um, of course, this is all because of my experiences in my life and how I have felt so tangled up in a mess. And I know what it feels like just to have more clarity in my life. And I want that for others as well. Sounds like trauma goo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And a lot of avoidance, a lot of numbing, a lot of unawareness, a lot of the focus on the exterior world of what we should be doing, what we should look like, how we should feel, how we should cope. Um, it's all about the shoulds. And instead of trying to fix ourselves or use the outside stuff, like diets and pills or quick fixes or the advice of other people it's instead turning it over shifting it into ourselves and really looking inside of ourselves because that's where the answers lie that's where our truth is and that's what i believe that we haven't been taught it's kind of like this cultural thing where we're supposed to look a certain way or do certain stuff but we're not encouraged to get back inside of ourselves. So I have a couple of questions. Obviously. Yeah, shoot, yeah questions. absolutely. So, <clears throat> um, first question, do you, mm -hmm. do you think there's a difference between societal expectations and like our internal mind protecting ourselves from like trauma? Mm-hmm. Is, is, is there a difference in that, in, in, in how we have to heal it? Yeah, I feel like there's a lot of, uh, we need to fix ourselves. We're broken. We don't know what we're doing. And so then that means then we have to go and get advice from other people. We got to go to our doctors, our therapists. And I'm not saying that that's not a place or, or, or spaces to go to. But what I'm saying is that there's a lot of trust in that and there's not enough trust in the knowledge and the wisdom that we already have inside of ourselves. And I think culturally there's a shift happening right now where there's a shift to acceptance and knowing that there are alternative ways of healing. There are alternative ways of getting, getting to the cure instead of always being the dis-ease, which leads to disease, and that shift is very powerful right now. And that's what I find that myself is in right now too, because for the longest time, I didn't talk about any of this stuff. I didn't talk to anybody. I didn't talk to my husband. I didn't talk to my friends because of the fear of what they were going to judge me or what they were gonna think of me. Like, oh, she's a woo woo. She's full of shit, honestly. Um, she's touchy feely. The spiritual is just hocus pocus stuff. 
And I don't believe that at all. But now that I'm talking about it and coming out with it, it is empowering me. And I believe that that's happening to you and others as well. I, I agree with you on the global conscious awareness shifting. I do really see that. Um, a lot of women are starting to t take their own power back. And it, I think it's causing a conflict with individuals that don't want that. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. Um, but it's it's necessary. Like we're whole people, and we are entitled to human rights. Uh, the judgment of others is such a horrible, like societal thing. Uh, I think that. I think that I didn't have that problem so much because, you know, I've always been overweight and I like just didn't pay attention to what other people were saying or doing and always wandering around beating my own little drum, doing whatever I wanted. But I do find that the older I get, the less bullshit I put up with from other people and yeah. uh, walking all over my boundaries and and that and I, and I I see that with a with a lot of women that are you know in their 40s and and up they just hit a, a point where they're just like I'm done I'm done I don't want to deal with that anymore absolutely it's glorious absolutely no it, it it truly is and it kind of goes back to what you even just you know said like the word boundaries like I can honestly say I knew of that concept in my head but I had no idea what that meant for me and that was a huge struggle. And that's why it wasn't that I allowed people to walk all over me. It was just that I didn't know how to navigate that. And now that I understand the power of boundaries and how it is our responsibility to advocate for them, that is now empowering. It's like, I don't need to rely on anyone else. I don't need to rely on the outside world to make that happen for me. I, I like, I have that choice now. And, th and just that I have taken my power back. And that's why advocating for your needs is so important and so missed in education. Like I'm a teacher, I'm a teacher by trade. And as much as, you know, I, I, I can appreciate what schools are, I think they're full of caca because they're missing the boat really on life skills and your emotional intelligence. Valuing yourself is not taught. That is not enhanced. It's like, and even as, you know, parents and a lot of us, like my parents had no idea what anything of that was. Like they were European immigrants. They wanted better for me in the way of having a job and, and security and education, which I completely appreciate. But they didn't know what it meant to feel your, 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 your you know, feelings. They didn't know what, what it meant to cry and that was okay. It wasn't a sign of weakness. It was... It was a whole other generation. And I find that having gone through what I have, now having kids, I know what I want them to value. And that is less of what other people think and more of what they are and really being confident in themselves. That again is empowerment. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. I, I agree with your point on school not teaching actual life skills school really teaches you how to go to work and sit at a desk for eight hours a day and to follow not the really herd, follow the sheep right not not question things yeah. I, I think it's really training for that there's no there's no financial education there's no personal education it, it's um so it's it's on the parents to teach their children that yeah. And it, it's, that's a hard thing to do if the parent doesn't know how to do these things. Absolutely. And I mean, yeah. And I'm not, I'm not faulting parents. I'm not faulting any, anybody. It's just to me, just the awareness now of what is important in life and the school of life and what happens. It's just, um, 
yeah, school, like the actual education system is a system and they've been doing the same old, same old. They've shifted in certain ways, but it's more towards technology and social media and kind of training in that. But again, like, where's this? Where is this? Yeah. I, you know, I, I'm old enough that I remember home ec where they would teach you how to do a little cooking, a little sewing, you know, yeah. kids, kids these days don't even, they don't have that. A lot of schools don't even have music and arts and it, it's just, it's, it's sad. And, and Absolutely. These things really, even if you're not good at the thing, if you enjoy it, you should be doing it. You, it makes you happy paint if it makes you happy sing off key like you're in a you're a cat in a room full of rocking chairs <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> it would be me that's how I sing <laughs> my husband says I sing very pleasantly and I'm like I know <laughs> no sir no sir I can tell you love me because you like my sing <laughs> yeah I I totally hear you on that one <laughs> yeah okay. doing things just for the pleasure of doing them that's a lost super, it is it's super important if you want to go walking and 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 take your shoes off and 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 go barefoot in the grass and smell the flower, do that. Absolutely, do that. Absolutely, you know? because because the norm is now is that stay busy, work, and then the opposite of that, which is to actually relax and enjoy your time, is uncomfortable. People don't know how to do it. Even just like just having to sit with, you know, with yourself for 30 seconds, like a lot of people can't do that because they yeah. get scared. They're, they're so they're like, they're not stimulated. There's not something to do. And the joy of just being that is a lost art. It It is. It It's, uh, I think it's critical for your mental health. It, it allows remove. you to be creative. It allows you to think. I like I like to meditate a little bit. It, you, you know, and when I first started, I, I was crazy pants. I couldn't sit still for 10 seconds. But now I can sit still for a little while and, and, and reflect. Sometimes it's, you know, a guided meditation. Sometimes it's just just sitting there and, and, and breathing. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and the, and the part about even taking care of yourself. And I think that a lot of people don't, don't do it because they think it takes a lot of time. They have to spend a lot of money because in their mindset, it's like going to the spa and getting a massage. It's like kind of like the superficial things. And for me, like, self-care is all that other stuff that doesn't cost money and it's really a value of your time where you are just being your art like you are being creative and you're doing art and losing yourself in the moment because you're so engaged in what you're doing and and um that is a way to replenish your spirit and your energy yes, yes. i so, sometimes it is even as simple as like ritualizing something my husband and I do that. We call it the morning coffee ritual. And, you know, he preps the coffee the night before. So when we wake up, it's already ready when we come downstairs. And we spend 10 minutes, the first 10 minutes of the day, having coffee together. That's awesome. Yeah. And it, it, we've been doing it for a couple of years now. And it, it it's it's a very important part of my day. It's sacred coffee drinking with the love of my life it, it doesn't have to cost money it doesn't have to you know you don't have to go to a spa you can give yourself a spa day at home mm -hmm. meditation super helpful because it allows you to connect with yourself and um it, it's very important to trust your body 
and trust your inner knowing and relate with that, like sit with it. And a lot of people find that very uncomfortable because it wasn't a skill set that they were taught. No, no. And, 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 and with this instant gratification culture, diving into yourself, it takes a little bit of time. And if it doesn't happen in the first six seconds, this is bullshit. I'm not doing it. It doesn't work. Right. And yeah. And really, it does take that dedicating of time and commitment to just being. And if it is uncomfortable for this first six, six seconds, okay. But come back to it and tomorrow do it for seven. And the next day do it for 10. Like you can gradually get to a place. And before you know it, you're doing a full minute of breathing, right? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. um yeah, it's just, it's, it's an interesting world that we're living in right now and, and navigating it where thankfully there's a shift back to well-being is happening. And this is a space and place I'm grateful to feel comfortable in and to find people like you who value it and we can grow it and empower it. I, I agree. I think a lot more people are interested in East meets West when it comes to mind, body, spirit, healing. And we're a little bit tired of medical field not really looking for problem mm -hmm. and only treating the symptoms of whatever is going on. And, and then you're you're on this medicine and then you're on another medicine to treat the symptoms of the medicine that you're on. And then next thing you know, you're on 10 different medicines and the root cause still isn't known. Yeah. You have to, as you said earlier, dis-ease, disease, like a lot of disease is rooted in emotional and mental. So you, you have to, you have to heal make well the entire body mm -hmm. absolutely sometimes, sometimes that's unpleasant conversations with yourself and yeah. being real with yourself and it's not easy and a lot of people are scared to try it yeah and and that was me for many 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 years where I was just scared of what I was going to find I was scared of what pain I was going to feel and it's like you just push it down, you push it away and you kind of hope and pray it doesn't ever come up. But the fact of the it matter does. is that the, it, it just does. And, it does. and your body is going to react to it with disease to get your attention, to get your attention to wake up. And for me, it was panic attacks, panic attacks. Like I could feel that my soul knew that I was living a lie and it was like, and it kept on trying to talk to me and I could hear it, but I ignored it. Yeah. And I don't know how many times I drove myself to emergency because of just the thought that I was dying. And it wasn't until, I mean, we, we all have to be ready in our own time, but when I was ready to open up, my goodness, I mean, it was painful. But the release, the freedom, that that is healing. That is healing. So there is pain first, for sure. But coming out on the other side, I wish I do it. I wish I did did it sooner. I wish I was ready sooner. Yeah, I I mean, I think all of us feel that way, right? We feel, yeah. we would love to have started earlier, but I also think that before you're ready, like when you're listening to your body, we've been taught not, as we were talking about earlier, not, not to, not to honor that, not, not to grow that, not to trust it. Yeah. 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 So it's the work that we do is very important, helping others start their wellness journeys or helping them wherever they are along on it. Mm-hmm super important exactly it's um i think that we we 
we encourage others to trust their their voice and their instincts and what their body is saying because of what we have gone through, like through ignoring it or not understanding what it was all about. And so as they they go through it, then we can say, no, there's actual there's actual truth to this. And we encourage you to pay attention because it's going to help you in the long run. Like don't ignore it. And because if I had someone to lean on and to guide me through it, then maybe I would have been ready or I would have been like, oh, well, maybe that is true. Maybe, maybe I should not be in the relationship. Maybe I should get out now. Maybe I should listen to my gut and not be afraid of what other people are going to say to me. Uh, it's just yeah. stuff. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I listened to my gut and that's how I found out that I had cancer. I, I actually listened to what my body was telling me. It was yes, specifically my gut, my, my lower abdomen. It felt heavy and wrong. Good for you. And yeah. So I, I'm a real big proponent of advocating for what your body is telling you, you know, don't, don't let it get to the point where you end up with something that could be a fatal disease. Start thinking about it now, start listening to that little, whatever it is, whether, wherever it radiates in your body and uh, take a minute to listen to it. Absolutely. 110,000%. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And then, and, and it's also to make note too, that our mind chatter creates a lot of fear about it. So there's practice in, in, um, in listening to the fear, but not allowing it to take over what's, what's happening. Cause I find that that can cloud what is really being shared with us in our bodies. So that's where, the mindfulness and paying attention and honoring the fear, but turning the volume down on it, not letting it to make matters worse, I guess. It's allow, it, it's okay to see it, honor it, but it is not okay to allow it to be put in charge of the activity. It is yes. allowed to be there. You are allowed to be afraid. Everybody has Absolutely. fear at something at some point, but do not let it drive the bus. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. That's the perfect thing to, you know, say, just don't allow it to, to drive the bus and to drive your health and your path. Absolutely not. Just turn the volume down and let it talk, but not to overtake what what's, you know, happening for sure. Yeah. I learning, learning to trust yourself with the little things will help you build the confidence to learn to trust yourself with the bigger things. It yes. absolutely builds your confidence. So if you want to build your confidence, start listening to what your body is telling you. You know, when that person's bad for you, you know, it, your body told you immediately, and then you didn't listen to it. And then three years later, you're in this toxic relationship or, or whatever you know when you're not supposed to do the thing. Your body tells you it's not in alignment with who you are. And mm -hmm. if you do it, it's a thing that you would rather not have done in retrospect later. Absolutely. Taking the time to nurture that relationship with your inner self is the whole life experience, right? It's what we're it supposed really, to be doing. <laughs> that's exactly it. That's exactly it. it <laughs> And, um, and at least this week, it's been really funny because I've really noticed like the duality in life, like living in the dark and living in the light, feeling the pain and feeling the relief. And it's really by experience, but also reflection. So even what you just said right now, like to take notice of what happened when you didn't listen to your gut, to your feelings, to your intuition, and what was the result of that? And then to take a step back and go, whoa, okay, this is what happened. But a lot of us don't even do that. They just carry on and kind of keep the cycle going and wonder why life is happening to me, not for me. Like, why is this happening to me? Why is this going on? 
I'll give an example. You're driving and you're, you, you get this thought, I should turn here. And then you don't do it. And then three miles later, you're in a car accident. Yeah. And had you just turned when, when, when you had the random thought to do it, yeah. you wouldn't have been in that accident. Yeah. And that's honestly where I started listening to myself is, is with that, um, that kind of thing, you know, car accident. And then I was like, wait a minute, there's something I should have listened to that. And so the next time it happened, I took the alternate route. I don't know what would have happened if I had gone. It doesn't matter. I built the trust in it. And ultimately it saved my life because when my body started telling me that there was something radically wrong, I listened to it. And my, my experience was very weird. Um, the cancer markers did not show up in my blood work. They had to do all kinds of testing. They actually had to do a DNC to find my cancer. And, you know, my, my gynecologist was like, well, this is the next thing. And I, I'm, I'm grateful that my doctor believed me yes. when I said there's a wrong thing. And I don't know if you know how much a healthy uterus weighs. How much? Four ounces. And yours? When they when they took it out, it was over 10 pounds. Wow. Wow. And that was missed. Yes. Right. Exactly. T 10 pounds. That's a, that's a bowling ball. Yes. A bowling ball. Literally up the size and weight of a bowling ball. That. You know, so if, if you look, if you look at like the science probability of me surviving that was not high it just no. wasn't no and I, I absolutely believe that mindset having the right support group friends family and my medical team and alternative wellness modalities are what I mean obviously I did my chemo and my radiation and right. had a hysterectomy like I followed what the oncologist told me to do, but yeah. <clears throat> there was also aromatherapy and chromotherapy and sound healing and Reiki energy healing, grounding. I had 15, 20 plants in my bedroom. So I was, I was sleeping in an oxygenated area. You know, it's, it's little things like that, that they, all of it, builds together all of it matters and the and the and the and the thing is is that you were in tune with your body you spoke up for yourself you advocated for yourself it lined up with your doctor trusting you and even if that doctor didn't i i believe that you would have kept on going and found somebody else right yes. so it was it was really kind of a, a chain of events, but because you were so trusting and aligned with you, that was what enabled it to be found. And then for you to be on that journey and for you to be open to not just chemotherapy, like to the medical system, but to other modalities and to honor you. I mean, all of that is a package deal. That's a package deal. And that yeah. is, and that's what, what it takes. And it all started with, you yeah right yeah me trusting 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 myself absolutely and, absolutely yeah it's uh it's pretty incredible right like when you when you sit down and, and you analyze it out you know not going to the doctor on that day not pursuing it or, or you know any little change yeah. could could have altered all of it well yes and like i I see people who rely a lot on the doctors and take their word for it. And when things go wrong, then they point the faint, faint finger at the doctor. But I have learned that we point, but there's three fingers pointing back at us. And we, and we have a role in this. And you took that role. You took that, uh, you were in control of it. 
And that's what a lot of people don't do. And that's why their path ends up on a different route. A couple things on that. It, it is a medical practice. They are practicing. They don't know everything. They know a lot. They, they, they spend a lot of time schooling, but they also aren't you. So you know your body better than they do. Yeah. You are, you have the right to a second opinion or a third opinion or a 15th opinion. You have those rights. If you know something's wrong with you, go figure it out. It's not acceptable for a doctor to not help you when you, that, yeah, I advocated hard and I advocate that people should absolutely be challenging their doctors when they disagree you have a right to say to them okay well i would like you to put in the chart that you're refusing to giving me this testing yeah absolutely absolutely Doctor doesn't want to put that in the chart they're going to give you the testing they don't want to write that down you have a right to do that you have a right to contact the insurance company and say the doctor did not provide the services that they were supposed to provide a lot of absolutely. people don't know you can do that no, no, they don't. And that's why, again, they go down a different path. Yep. But it's about being in control of yourself and choosing for, for yourself and knowing that you can advocate for your needs in so yep. many ways. Yeah. And, and it's and you and, should. And you should. You should. Because nobody else is going to. And, that, and that's powerful. That's powerful to know. And we don't use that power enough. Oh, well, I tell everybody, feel free to talk back. It's okay. Respectfully, obviously. Oh, respectfully. Yes, yes, always. You know, and with kindness, like they have spent a decade in school. They have learned many things, but it's okay to ask questions. It's okay to disagree with them. And a lot of people just absolutely accept them as an authority. Yeah. Carte blanc. And and you, and you you shouldn't. You should expect your you are the authority of you. And you have the right to say, no, that does not align with what I believe is going on. Absolutely. And sometimes yeah. that just means finding another practitioner. And that's okay. It is. It's absolutely okay. Good on you. Not not everybody is 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 for you. Not everybody's against you, but not 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 everybody is part of your story. That's exactly it. And um and and knowing that then allows for you to move on. Right. We don't have to be stuck with the same doctor that we've had for 20 years and base it on the relationship that we've had with, you know, them. I mean, they're probably a great person, but in this time and in, in time and place, they are not going to be of value to you and your health and wellness. And it's and and those are the choices that you have to make for you. And um, and that's it. It's, it's not personal. It's not no. personal. No. And sometimes that that's part of like the problem. Some people get a little hung up on that and make it personal when it doesn't need to be personal. Yeah. And that, and the personal thing, it goes on to every single area of our lives where we do take it personally, how a person reacts to what we say or what we're doing. And the fact of the matter is it has nothing to do with us. It's something that has been triggered in them that brings it up. And that's really also another lesson in life. One of my favorite quotes is someone else's opinion and of me is none of my business. And I don't know who said it, but it resonates. It does. It resonates very strongly for me. So yeah. 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 All right. So Wendy, do you, do you have a free gift for our audience? I do. I absolutely do. So what I have is the three and three in morning routine starter kit. And what that is, is that it lays out, how can you start your morning with you first? And um, for myself, because I am a mother of three young children, it is very easy for them to take over my life from the moment I wake up. 
And, um, you know, for, 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 for quite a while, I felt angry and resentful and frustrated. And when I took the back seat to observe myself and watch what was happening, I noticed that for one, I was pointing at them and the housework and my husband for making me feel like this. But then that voice said, did you ever notice that three fingers are pointing back at you? And that is when I really realized that I'm the problem. I have chosen to put them in front of me and my needs because that's what you're supposed to do, right? And it's supposed to, exactly. And my body, my emotions were saying, no, what are you doing? When are you going to take care of us? When are you going to take care of yourself? Yeah. And that is really what brought up the three and three morning routine. It was, when can I put myself first? And the morning for me, at least that was it. Because at the end of the day, I'm tired. When my boys are napping, honestly, I'm not going to do it because my daughter, I want to spend time with her. So the morning waking up before them, before my phone, emails, laundry, dishes, whatever it is. And that is just doing a brain dump dumping out everything in your head that you think you need to do and clearing out the way for your day. Something that we mentioned earlier, getting in touch with your body, embodying your body and connecting to it, even with the simple practice of breathing your breath. And then of course, to set your intentions, your intentions are like your GPS of your day. Like, where are you going? Well, how do you, how do you want to live? How do you want to be? And how do you want to feel in this very moment and throughout each moment of your day, go back to that and make those choices instead of reacting and then getting off course and wondering what happened, right? Because again, we have empowerment of how we want to do it. And the last uh, bonus piece is to reflect out after, reflect what just happened and what went well, what can I do better? And then that way tomorrow is even better because yeah. you have taken time for yourself to set yourself up. So that's basically what the star starter kit, you know, is, and um, it's worked wonders for me and for others. And I just want it for all of you, all of you. That sounds absolutely amazing. I will make sure that the link for that is below in the show notes, as well as my free gift, which is the two essential oils that I used every day while I was going through chemotherapy. I want to thank everybody for, uh, tuning in today. I want to thank Wendy for being here and imparting her wisdom. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Tanya. Bye-bye.